My name is Sally Andre, and the reason why I'm here today is because I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, Rondell, and in that conversation, I was talking to him about the state of affairs um, of our parents, you know, talking about the state of affairs with our youth in Jamaica, crime, violence, and, and, and that conversation went into um, talking about, you know, my upbringing and how I felt growing up as a child who was labeled, right? So a little bit of background on, on me. I was adopted. My mother gave me away when I was three months old. She was walking the only person when she woke up one morning. I've never met her. And she decided she was going to give me away. So she started making her way by foot and she got to live her school and she was walking towards back in, that, in those days. It was RJR to make an announcement that she had this little baby that she wanted to give away. So, um, when she was making her way down the road, um, the rain started drizzling and a kind of young man stopped his vehicle and asked if she needed help or a ride. And that she made the decision to get into the car. So when she got into the vehicle, um, she started explaining her plight to the gentleman all her background and how she come to have this baby that she can't care for. And the gentleman said to her in that moment, um, Mom, please don't give away the baby, please don't harm the baby. My wife and I are unable to have children. We will take the baby and care for her. And, you know, in that moment, you know, my, when my parents were relating the story to me, my father would share the story of how after they exchanged some particulars back in those days, there was no phone. My father was, uh, he's a trained educator, but at that time he was in insurance, so he always had a little book with a pen in the car and he wrote down some particulars about her and she went on her way. And when 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 um my, my dad placed me in the front seat of the, the passengers, the passenger side, the front seat, and barricaded me in with the little baby back in China and they would hand it me over with. And when he took me home to his wife, um, she was actually on her in this great family because just three weeks prior to that she was rushed to uh, the hospital viewing and they had to do a, an emergency hysterectomy because she was going through you know she had like three miscarriages up to that point all sorts of things doctors tell her she not may really have no picnic and she decided that well that's what you say but i know i will have a child um and, and so i came into the picture so when I found out all of this at age 11, 8 to 12, when I graduated, when I would have graduated from um, St. Richard's Primary, and I recognized that, recognized that my last name was different from my parents' last name, so I started asking questions because, no, you do come on entrance, so you have little sense, you know? <laughs> and they started explaining all of this to me. So by the time I, I went to St. Andrew High School for girls, which is where I passed, but I was really messed up in my mind because I'm thinking about it and I'm saying how how can how can a mother just give away a child like that to a man just to a strange man from the road it really messed me up and I I felt like I didn't have a lot of self worth I felt like I didn't have any value so I said no man something wrong with me when my mother would have that so that now led to the out of control behavior that I started displaying I used to sneak out of the house a lot of parties do things that I'm not supposed to do, you know, and I'm um, generally an out of control child. No, to God be every single glory, my parents, the parents that raised me were my parents, I don't refer to them as adopted parents, but I have to say it so people understand the story. So my parents are trained educators, and at that time my mother was a lecturer at Michael. So she got me diagnosed and I was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So imagine now, you know, I just learned at 11 that my mother gives me away. That is rejection in my mind. And now they're coming to put this label on me. The teacher them tell me, I'm not going home to nothing. Who are true, those that are for me and Andrews. Who, you know, it was just not a good time for me in my mind. So then I was, I was um, labeled with ADHD, diagnosed with ADHD, and then I started taking medication and I calmed down a little bit and I was able to get through my CAC, got to lower six form. Them said, no, I'm um, so we get people to that. So they won't make it to, to, to upper six. But I share all of that to say that I, I am very 
cognizant and aware of the fact that our education system is broken because of my story and because of the fact that I obviously could see the struggle my parents went through with me. They were very good parents, but they didn't have all the answers, but they did try. You know, they did do some things. And then after I got picked out of Andrews, I worked for a year under the heart training program as a financial institution and then I decided I wanted to go to teacher's college because by then I'm now eight, you know, like 18, 19. And um, I went to Michael and I selected special education as my major because I now wanted to go back into education and be that teacher advocate for children like me who were heavily misunderstood. So, um, <laughs> the book, Wayward Teen to Transform the Queen and Strategies to Help Your Teenager Succeed, it's really me. <laughs> this is me out of control. Um, my husband built this graphic. Big up yourself, Mr. Matt. My husband built my book cover. Um, and, and this is me now with the transformation of a renewed mind about who I've been called to be in Christ, in purpose, um, to, to give back to help. And so in my conversation with Randall, and I was, you know, just sharing with him, he's like, so, my friend Shelly Ann, well, you know Shelly Ann, everybody knows Shelly Ann. <laughs> um, Praise of Christ has a center that helps, um, you know, parents with assessments and stuff. I think that you guys should connect. So that is how, um, that, you know, my story brought me to you. The short version, because we don't have a lot of time today. And so... When I when I spoke with him, he was like, so I think we should, you know, connect with Shelly, donate some books or whatever the case may be. And I was like, absolutely, because I feel my mother and father understand how parents feel when your child is labeled as anything outside of the norm. In any anything. Doesn't matter the special need. It can be learning disability, it can be emotional disability, it can be um, what they call no intellectual disability can be any type of dis disability. Once you're told that a child is an outlier, you go through a process. And so this book really was written from the perspective of the out of control child <laughs> that I was labeled as, and then the special uh, special ed teacher, me going back into the classroom with the knowledge of education and and how our children process and then having to help other parents go through that journey. I have some parents who then go through a big denial. You know, it's like it's like grief, you know. Um some parents grieve the disability or the labeling as though somebody has died and they go through different stages. And so this book really was written from the perspective of how do I help parents to shift their mindset about um who their child has been called to be on the planet, irrespective of the label. But the feedback I've been getting is just so overwhelming and tremendous. Like, people are like, hey, parent, every parent needs to read this. And, um, and so today, I'm more than happy and pleased to come here and offer my gift to the center. Um, you know, it's one of my gifted writing. And I believe that you know, these books are worthy by the Holy Spirit. I really don't take much credit for it. And that they're going to help parents to walk their journey. So, <laughs> um, yeah. that's that's basically it. And then hand over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want to say. Yeah, yeah. say um, yeah. So, Sally and I connected, and this was long overdue. <laughs> 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 but, in, as usual, we believe in divine timing. And I would like to say that Sally and I share similar uh, background in the sense that I grew up with a single mother, my father wasn't present, you know, the environment itself. Everybody thought that, you know, a girl from an inner city would not amount to anything. And you kind of internalize their perception and you start to think that, you know, this is true. And uh, for you to actually come out of it is where your parents have to have the knowledge to help you. And I find that a lot of parents are not equipped with the knowledge or have resources or options or advocates, somebody they can talk to in helping them to raise their children. 
and let's face it, here in Jamaica, healthcare is expensive. It is treatment or therapy is expensive. And when we can have persons like Sally who contribute to the development of our children, it's, it's phenomenal. Because for me, I understood growing up how difficult it was to transition and knowing that, you know, I am made for more and yes i'm here now and i can speak like this because you know i've learned and i've met persons supporting to me and yeah i'm here but what about those kids that are left back what about the parents who don't understand you know what to do with their, their children if things are happening and i'm grateful for the shelly and the process right and i'm hoping that you will continue to you know be a part of the center you can. I'm hoping that this will begin a partnership between us because I'm hoping COVID go away very soon. <laughs> so we can entertain and we can educate our parents and you know just have meaningful interaction with the kids here at the centre because it's here and we need to get the word out that is available and it's not just available but it's affordable, mm -hmm. right? And it's a we want individuals to come in and to get the assessment and we want to be able to make sure that when we do finish our assessments and provide our therapy and our counselling, whether it's for kids or for adults, when we send them through the door, we, they will believe it better than they can. Yes. And you know, it's for me one of the most important things in life is not to acquire the skills and to acquire the money and to acquire everything but it's to give back and it's to serve we are all called to serve and if we can serve in a capacity like this it will, it's going to be tremendous so i'm i want to thank sally for her because she just came, when i was talking to her she just came out to say you know i have this book and resources and resources are good and you know it's it's not just monetary resources it's resources like this because you can't pay for things like this and persons can sit and they can read and we can provide the education and we can provide information for them and their family so thank you so much yes. for coming to the center and i'm sure you. the guys will enjoy the books yes. and we're hoping to find a way to do more for the center but not just in this way but to equip you know whether it be fundraising to so have funds coming into the center where we can easily streamline things and get things moving so that's my hope that's the, the future for the center and as i said you know covid presenting an opportunity for me because i would have been traveling um, last year you know it provided me an opportunity to really come and be a part of the center and see how best we can take the next step in making sure that the Shelley and Fraser Assessment Center you know opens and stays open. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much and you know I'm looking forward to what will happen for the center and you know things like this will encourage more persons outside to come in and know what's happening and we can provide our resources. Okay, so on behalf of the Shalian Resort Center, we'd just like to just reiterate and to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. These resource books, because often times we'll have parents who are sitting and waiting for hours while the assessment is going on. So these books will come in very handy and a lot of times we have parents who they want to know what to do. We have adolescents coming in with their different concerns as well. And when it is they hear your story, I'm sure it will be very impactful. So we thank you for thinking of us Absolutely. and we appreciate it greatly.